Affinity Designer isn't made to handle proper 3D shapes. But like with all design software, there is little tricks that we can use to make shapes look 3D using things like shadows, highlights, and even just other shapes. So today let's go through how to make some simple 3D shapes. So there is a few ways that you can do this. One is kind of a really quick and easy way, which gets you pretty decent results. And another way, which would be using the isometric grid, is a longer process, which gets you actually much better results overall, but does take a lot longer to get used to. Today, we're gonna to go with the quick and easy way. And in the future, I'll probably put out a video for the isometric grid. All right, so here we have a few shapes. So we've got a square, a rectangle, a couple circles, and a couple triangles. It'll all make sense as we go. So we'll start off with the easiest one, which is the square. So simply, if we wanna make this 3D, we literally need to create a back for this cube and the sides. So say, for example, if we want this square to be 3D in this kind of down and right direction, what we'll do is we'll duplicate this square. So if we hold Alt and then bring it to something like here. Now what we can do just to make things a little bit easier for ourselves is if we make the color of the square, slightly darker to kind of portray that it's the back. So if we just make it a light shade of gray and in the layer panel here, we'll make sure that the gray square is at the bottom. So we're left with this. So we're kind of getting there. So the easiest way that you can actually do this now is create the other sides of this square. So from here, we can actually do two things and I'll show you both. What we could do is if we grab the pen tool, head down to this bottom left corner, click, go down to the bottom left corner of the back square, click, head over to the right bottom corner, click, go up to the top right corner, click, and then back over to the top right corner of the front square and click. And then just to complete the shape, we'll go back down to the bottom left. So now we have this strange little shape. But if I were to add the same color to this shape, but now in the layer panel here, if we move this front square all the way to the front again, what you can now see is we do have a cube. So this way we've now created the sides and the bottom all in the same color. So if we were to change the color of this background, it would all be the same color, which I think in some instances can work really well, but in others, maybe not. So that's one way of doing it. The other way, if we head back to this stage here, is literally making the different sections. So if we grab the pen tool again, go to the bottom left corner, click there, bottom left corner of the back square, click there, go to the other side, bottom right corner, and instead of going up this time, we're gonna to go to the bottom right corner of the front square, click, and then complete the shape. So now we only have the bottom face of the square. If we give that a color, you'll see that we've got that little area there. And now from here, what we would do is make the side square. So if we grab, the top right corner here, click with our pen tool, go to the top right corner of the back square, go down to the bottom right corner, and then go up to the bottom right corner of the front square, and then up to the top to complete the shape. Now give that a color, and now we've got basically the same thing that we had before. However, now what we can do is make these slightly different colors. So if we want to, we can make the bottom look a slightly darker than the side. In fact, we'll make this a little bit darker as well. Now we're left with that kind of cube, which looks a lot better in general. But it does mean that if we were gonna add something like a gradient to this, it'll be a lot easier. So make this look even nicer, what we can do is go over to the fill tool, grab that. So if we go to our front face here, and if we make a simple gradient going from right to left like that, and then what we'll do is we'll grab our right face and again, make a simple gradient, but going backwards this time. And what we wanna do is you can see the color gradients going vertically. We wanna make that kind of in line with the square. And then what we'll do is we'll do the same thing, select the bottom and then do the same thing, something like that. So just by adding that gradient, you can see it kind of gives it a little bit more depth to it because things don't usually change from one color to another another in a 3D object. It's more like a gradient of a shadow. So basically there's our 3D square. So what we can do now is if we grab the front, the side and the bottom, and if we press control G, we can group that together. We've actually still got this back square which actually we don't need anymore. Now we can group this together. We've got our little square here, which we can resize, spin around and do what we want with. Now, if you were to actually recolor this, because we've added a gradient to this, we can do this two ways. We can either recolor all the gradients. So going into each one, going to the fill tool, changing the gradient color of this to a certain color, changing the other side to the same color, and then making it slightly darker and blah, 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 blah. Or another thing that we can do is by selecting this group, if we go down to these adjustments, and if we go up to recolor what we can do now and be careful with this because when you have it oversaturated it looks terrible we want to bring down the saturation and we'll bring down the lightness a little bit as well 
off. And now what we can do is we can change the color of this cube to whatever color we want, simply like that. And if we want to actually change it again, all we do is click on this recolor adjustment and then again, pick whatever color we want. Like I said, remember to decrease the saturation and the lightness just to make it look better. Because if we up these like that, unless you want a super vibrant color like that, I'd highly recommend kind of bringing it back down. But yeah, that's our square. Now a cube. It's basically the same principle with the rectangle. So just to go through it very quickly again, we've got our rectangle. Let's make it down to the left this time. We duplicate, put it where we want, change the color to something darker, move the front face to the front in the layer panel, go to our pen tool, go to the top left corner, click that shape. We want to make this square here like that. Going to give that a color. And then what we want to do is go to this bottom face and make that. So rather than using the pen tool, what you can actually do as well is get another rectangle, line it up with this one, convert this to curves, and then just use these points to line up and snap to where you want. Some people might find that faster. It's kind of entirely up to you what you want to do. And then if we want, we can select this, give it a gradient this way, like that square, give it a gradient that way, like this one, give it a gradient downwards. And just like that, we got ourselves a nice looking rectangle. Like I said, the square and the rectangle are very similar. In fact, they're the exact same. All right, circle. Now, the reason there's two circles here is that there is two ways I can think of to do this. One is using the gradients. So just like we did there, a circle when it's 3D becomes a sphere. And the only thing that really separates them is the gradient. So if we grab this circle and simply just add a gradient to it, but in this case, what we'll do is we'll change this gradient. So we'll make this darker color a little bit more darker. And then if we bring this gradient right to the edge, and now what we've got right now is a linear gradient, which works great for squares and rectangles, but this isn't a square or a rectangle. So if we go up to the type at the top here, if we go down to elliptical, which basically means circle. Now we grab the points of this, we can now make a decent looking sphere. So just with a gradient, we can do that quite easily. And again, if we wanted to change the color, we could either change the color of the gradient or we could add a recolor adjustment and do the same thing we did with the square. But there is another way. So if we come down to this circle here, we select this circle, instead of using a gradient, we can actually create our own gradient by using some effects. So if we open up the effects, now what we need with this, an inner shadow, and what we'll do is we'll make the shadow, we'll just up the opacity to make it a lot easier to see. We'll increase the radius, increase the intensity, just so we can see it. And now what we want to do is we want to offset it, but we want it the other way around. So we're going to change this angle there. Now what we can do is we can bring the intensity down, bring the radius up slightly, and I'm going to bring the opacity down. And that in itself, I mean, you could pass that off as a decent sphere right there. Or what we can do is we can add the glow. But instead of using the inner glow, if we add another inner shadow, so if we just hit this plus button here, it'll create another inner shadow. This time, however, with the second one, we're going to change the angle to the other side. We're going to go up to the blend mode and we're going to change this to screen and we're going to change the color to white. Now it is going to be a lot more difficult to see because this is not a colored circle. So if we add a color to it before we do anything else, let's make it a red like that. What we can now do is again, we can change the offset and the intensity and the radius. And in fact, I'm going to change the shadow part a little bit more. I'm going to offset it a lot more. And we're going to add that shine in, but only very subtly. So like that. What we've basically done there is made a very similar sort of gradient, but just using the effects. Kind of entirely up to you how you want to do it. You can kind of see this one looks a little bit more flat, but if you want that sort of effect, you can do it with the effects rather than just a gradient. So four down, two to go. Now, you might be wondering why we've got two triangles here. One of them, we're going to make into a pyramid. The other one, we're going to make into a cone. So super easy, very simple, the same as the square. So all we're going to do, we're going to grab this triangle. We're going to duplicate it, bring it down here. Same as before, we're going to give this triangle which is going to be at the back. It's slightly darker color, so we can make sure we know what we're doing. We're going to move the front face to the top. So we've got the front in the front and the back in the back. Head over to our pen tool, go to the top of this triangle, go to the top of the back triangle, click. I'm going to go right down to the bottom right, click there, and we're going to make this right face of this pyramid. So we're going to go back up to the front triangle in the bottom right corner, click there, and then back up to the top to complete the shape. Again, give it a color. We've got that side. We're going to go to the bottom left, go to the back of the bottom left, go to the right hand side, click up to the top and then go to that side. Simple. Give that a color. We've got ourselves a decent looking pyramid. And again, if we want to, we can add some gradients into it to make it look even nicer. So yeah, so we'll just make this one, this bottom square a little bit darker, just to make it a bit more obvious that it is at the bottom. Give it a bit more depth. All right, last but not least, the cone. Now for me, personally, it's hard for me to visualize a cone if it's this way around. So I'm just gonna spin this around just to make it a little bit easier. So actually what a cone is, is a triangle with a circle at the bottom. So really what we need 
is a circle. So if we grab the circle tool, zoom in here, and to make things easier, I'm gonna line it up with the center here, hold control, so we're creating from the center, and then I'm gonna go all the way to the outside, so it snaps about like that, it's fine. So it's already given it a gray color, which I was gonna do anyway, but even without adding anything else to that, we've got ourselves a decent looking cone just by changing the color of that inner circle. But if we wanna go a little bit further, let's bring back our gradients. So we'll use our triangle here, grab our gradient tool, go across like this, and again, this isn't a linear shape so we could use the linear doesn't look too bad but if we use elliptical and then place the lightest part here and then put the darkest side on that side and then what we'll do is we'll select the inner circle and do the same thing we're going to go right across and then we're going to change it to elliptical and then curl it down this way in fact i think these are a little bit too dark but let's just change this darker side make it a little bit lighter and then make the lighter one a little bit lighter just like that we got ourselves a decent looking cone now all these shapes if you select everything that we've made in them group it together we can then move this shape how we want we can spin it around if we need to and make this bigger smaller we can grab the whole group make our edits and do what we need to do with any of these shapes there you go that's how easily you can make some 3d shapes in affinity designer like i said this isn't the only way to do it and another way is to use the isometric grid but that can actually be both easier and harder at the same time so we'll leave that for another video if you like the video make sure you give it a thumbs up hit subscribe for more videos like this if you do want that video for the isometric grid then let me know in the comments below and as always i've been brown bear thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one